Hello students and welcome back to another course in the Lore of the Iron Kingdoms. Today we're talking about the Circle Obros and their Tharn allies. And before we begin, thank you Private Your Press for letting us read your fantastic lore. And if you guys are enjoying these courses, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know how I'm doing, let me know if you have any other cool stories or cool insights about what's going on in the Iron Kingdoms, of course. And before we begin, we are going to read a little preface from the original Circle Oberos command book regarding the Tharn. The second group of warriors that serve the Circle are the Tharn, fierce barbarians clinging to a way of life that has long since otherwise vanished from the world. While the Black Clads deliberately created the Wolves of Oberos as a martial organization to serve their needs, the Order's alliance with the Tharn is different. The Tharn have traditionally fought for the Druids because they see the Black Clads as a spiritual emissary of their patron god, the Devourer Worm. When Morvana the Autumn Blade recently released them from their dire effects of a terrible curse known as the Ten Ills, it reinforced their steadfast loyalty not only to her, but also to the entire Circle Oberos. Additionally, the Tharn are a savage people, and a constant opportunity for bloodshed provided to them by the Circle is more than enough motivation for most of them to join the Druids in battle. The Tharn are supernaturally gifted warriors and can enhance their fearsome skills at arms by channeling the destructive power of the Devourer Worm. All Thorn can affect a terrifying transformation that instills their bodies with strength, speed, and mind of a savage predator. Only loosely organized, these warriors generally operate at a tribal level in battle, where their strengths and speeds adds a terrific might to any circle fighting force they support. Alrighty, and with that out of the way, uh, I always thought Tharn were just really ugly humans, but apparently they are not. They are almost uh, lichen, or almost kind of like warp wolves, but not quite because they're natural warp wolves, which is a little different. But let's read about everything they have to offer and see the disturbing truths arise in these pages. Uh, first, we are going to begin with the Tharn Ravagers, Circle Unit. They yet revel in the old ways, feasting on the hearts of the fallen, quenching their thirst in warm blood. The Tharn have always been able to channel the savage power of the Devourer Worm. In times of peace, their villages are indistinguishable from those of now largely extinct northern Kadoran barbarian tribes. In times of war, however, their population began to boil with bestial metamorphosis. Billowing a call of the worm sends their ravagers into an unbridled frenzy of physical transformation. Muscle mass expands and thickens, skin hardens and teeth elongate into terrible fangs. Their senses become as keen as the beasts they revere, and they fall into a state of insatiable hunger. Legends of inhuman deprivation among the ravagers are true. They gleefully tear out and eat the hearts of their prey, eyes aglow with berserk madness. Their acts of frenzied feasting adds an element of terror to their grievous attacks. The three centuries ago, the Tharn numbered among the largest barbarian tribes, tens of thousands called the Northern Thornwood home. Most were slaughtered as part of a political gambit by the Kadoran queen against Signar while the rest suffered under the withering curse of the decimating their numbers. Decades ago, the leaders of the Circle Obro secretly unraveled this curse and restored the Tharn's numbers, and they have once again grown strong. This renaissance, led by Mervana the Autumn Blade, has engendered the absolute loyalty of the Tharn, who are now eager to repay their debt. The Druids have encouraged the Ravagers to come forth, led by their Beast Lord, to provide much-needed strength and ferocity to the battles being waged by the Circle Obros, where areas few of their allies are eager to engage in such brutal carnage, Tharn Ravagers enthusiastically charge from the forest gloom to hack apart those with their long-handled axes. The trail of mutilated bodies they leave behind is a ghastly reminder of the Dark Age when civilized humans embraced the Minite priest to save them from these savage tribes. Weirdly enough, I actually don't usually run into Tharn Ravagers. I'm usually always the the very quick and agile ladies who are always a lot more terrifying to run into. So, But let's read about the Tharn Ravager chieftains, and then we'll go over the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes. The Tharn follow their chieftains as blood follows blood, inexorably and without question. 
Becoming a chieftain among the Tharn requires far more than simply being born into a prestigious line. The chieftain must also be a great and bloody warrior and gain absolute respect of his warriors. In addition to raw battle prowess, the Tharn also admire canny leaders who bring them prosperity. Though the Tharn live and fight without question and revel in the gifts bestowed upon them by their unique relationship with the Devourer Worm, mindless slaughtering is not the only criteria for the revered Tawath's kings. Great wisdom is also essential, for without the guiding hand of their chieftains, the Tharn would never be able to gather in large numbers or form such formidable fighting arm for the Circle Oberos. By the time the Tharn have earned the right to be called chieftain, he has led war parties and killed rivals beyond counting. Adorned with the grisly trophies of his victories, the chieftain is an image out of the nightmares of civilized men, the wooden haft of a well-worn axe turned black by blood of a lifetime's worth of killing. He is attended at all times by the greatest warriors of his Toath. Indeed, to serve in a chieftain's personal guard is a great honor and reward of any Tharn. Those who fight by his side are guaranteed endless opportunities to slake their bloodthirsty urges upon the hearts of many enemies. Each chieftain knows he leads only so long as he maintains the respect of his tribe. Thus, he seeks out the heart of battle so his axe might cut swaths worthy of his name. Inspired to try to match their chieftain, his guard commits acts of violence incredible even by the bloody standards of the Tharn. Charging forward at the leading edge of every battle, the chieftain and his ravagers strive to be the first to clash with the enemies, vying for the honor of drawing first blood in the name of their Toas and their hungry god. My goodness, these guys sound terrifying, and I imagine whoever wrote these have seen them firsthand, and that sounds terrifying as well, but it looks like it was written by Linus Wesselbon. I'm not even sure who that is. Well, good luck to him, and good luck to all his endeavors, because uh, it sounds like a very short-lived life if you're among these guys and you're not one of them. But let's read over their Mark Three and Mark Four changes. All right, and it appears these guys got some uh, quite a bit of changes. Uh, speed still six, mat still seven, defense still thirteen. Their armor actually went up to fifteen, making these guys a little bit more beefy. Um, their Thorn Axe actually got an upgrade, uh, well, or change, not really an upgrade. Um, still a Power 13, still as a Reach Weapon, 2 inches, but they got Brutal Charge and replacement for Powerful Charge. So, a Brutal Charge gives them a plus 2 damage to their charge attacks, uh, compared to their original plus 2 to their charge attack rolls. So, I imagine at a mat of 7, these guys don't usually miss, so that's actually pretty dang good hitting somebody with a 15 on a charge. Oof. Um, they were given tough. Um, they kept ba Pathfinder. Uh, their Heart Eater ability has been replaced with Body Snatcher Heart Eater ability, which basically they can have up to three bodies on them, and they can use them to they can use those bodies to make additional attacks or boost attack and damage rolls or and or damage rolls. Um, they were also given Rapid Healing. So that means after they were attacked, they automatically heal D3 of whatever that attack did. And at guys that have a health of 8, that's actually pretty devastating to people trying to kill these guys off. Um, they maintain their True Walker ability as well, so they still get a plus 2 defense against melee attacks while in the forest. And they ignore forest terrain when drawing line of sight, making these guys even more terrifying for medium base models. That have Pathfinder, so yeah, terrifying. But let's see what happens to the Chieftain for their Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes. Alrighty, appears the stat line hasn't really changed. Still a speed 6, mat 8. Um, defense 13, armor 15 now instead of the 14 it was before. Uh, the abilities have switched up, so Body Snatcher is now turned to Body, S or Heart Eater now turned to Body Snatcher Heart Eater, allowing him to collect up to 3 bodies and allowing him to make an additional attack or a boost attack or damage rolls using said bodies that he gains. Um, instead of granting Brutal Charge, which they already have Brutal Charge now, so they don't need it anymore, now he gives them Vengeance, which if they were damaged previous turn during the maintenance phase, they can move three inches and take another whack at somebody, which is awful. He was also They also removed Advanced Deployment from him, 
but they gave him mass carnage which gives everybody in his unit overtake which allows them after they destroy a model they get to move one inch and make another hit on somebody and that coupled with their heart eater ability of gaining bodies and getting to move again and then hitting other people is kind of awful because these guys can clear out an entire you know five ten man unit if given enough time so yeah terrifying also he has also been given rapid healing as well so he is also healing up after each shot so yeah these guys are a mainstay and i wouldn't be surprised if we see more tharn ravagers running through some tharn lists for just a little bit more punch in the future so yeah terrifying also his weapon is still a mat 8 range 2 power 13 with brutal charge because that's what they gave everybody yay for them also they all have pathfinder and tree walker so that is just a nice unit ability yeah i do not look forward to seeing these guys in the future and if i never have to that is too long enough all right, let's move on. Alrighty, we're going to talk about the Tharn Ravager Shaman. This guy used to be a weapon attachment, but in Mark IV, he is now a solo for ease of use, I imagine. And he probably gives a lot more interesting abilities now than he did before, but let's read his lore first. The Devourer's Wrath splits the sky. Lorecash, the unrepented Tharn Ravager Shaman. Many often incorrectly accuse the druids of Circle Obros of worshipping the Devourer Worm, when it is the Tharn who actually embody every wild story and horrific rumor associated with that ancient god. These Ravager Terrors are accompanied by their shamans as they hunt and consume the flesh of men. They raise towns and villages to slaughter the innocent and convert the dark forest, chanting around blazing bonfires while conducting unspeakable feast rites, praising the beast of all shapes. Their shamans, older but no less brutal spiritual leaders, direct these revels. They continually urge on their barbaric kin, who have forsaken their human heritage, to partake in ever greater acts of carnage. Each shaman is a dread priest of a devourer worm, able to call down the primal energies of scoring lightning. The devastating power of the storm are the shamans to command. The charred corpses of its victims littering the ground as his fellow Tharn tear into the enemy ranks. Yeah, these guys are terrifying, and yet I have never seen one before, but they collect bodies like every other Tharn. However, they have some very interesting Mark III to Mark IV changes, which explains why they became a solo rather than just a weapon attachment. So, let's go over their stat line first. They're still a speed 6. They now have a magic attack of 6. They're a mat 7, defense 13, and their armor went up to a 15. Uh, their weapons now are just a totem staff at a pound 12, and it is a magical weapon. Uh, they removed their lightning ranged weapon because they are now a spellcaster and not just a guy who has a lightning staff, which makes these even more terrifying. It appears that they were given a Blood Snatcher Heart Eater ability like every other Ravager, so they can collect bodies and use them to boost attacks and damage rolls and have buy additional attacks. Now they were given Magic Ability, which the spells that they were given on their list are now Chain Lightning, so they can shoot somebody with the Chain Lightning, then it branches out D3 consecutive models, which is awful, at ten a POW 10 each. Um, Another spell they were given was Hunter's Grace. Friendly Tharn models cannot become knocked down while within five of this model. And then they were given Shepherd's Call, which removes one Fury Point from each friendly living faction war beast currently within three, which makes these guys a fantastic utility to have in any Ravager army, because having the ability to keep your guys from getting knocked down, who already have tough, makes them super tough. And then having the ability to control focus or Fury management is always phenomenal. Um, these guys were also given the rapid healing ability because they are Tharn Ravagers. And then they were also given the, well, they also kept the Tree Walker ability, so they gain a plus two in melee. And then they can see through forests with, without being blocked line of sight. So that is phenomenal and makes these guys even more terrifying. Also explains why their point cost went up to three. And they are now a solo, so you can get a couple of these guys into a Tharn Ravager army and have have a lot of control all around so yeah these guys are a pretty phenomenal i recommend you get a couple 
All right, let's move on. All right, next up, the Tharn Weaver White Mane. You are proud of your scars. A few times you have tasted the praise heart. Return to me when your axe brides are beyond counting. The lives of the Tharn are difficult, and most of their warriors die young in battle. Those few veterans who survive decades of hunting and overcome the odds to reach their senior years become white manes. Seasoned killers, their younger kins, look to them with both respect and fear. These eldest Tharn think nothing of taking lives beyond the brutal joy they derive from the act and the vigor they gain from the life essence of their prey. Having grown strong in the blood and hearts of their victims for most of their lives, white manes are the embodiment of Tharn in their prime. Even without the reflexes of youth, they are utterly deadly. Having mastered their weapon and gained instincts for battle that verge beyond supernatural. White maids do not fear death. Rather, they look forward to dying gloriously on the battlefield, knee-deep in the blood and entrails of their foes. These warriors prefer a final blaze of savagery to the quiet fading of old age. Seeing such a veteran charge into battle inspires ravagers to a frenzied state as they rush to follow his example. A white man's scarred countenance and grisly tokens proudly mark countless kills and many years of brutal fighting. And again... I've never actually seen these types of Ravagers, and an old man Ravager, I imagine, having a decade's worth of, you know, going feral and killing and slaughtering and all sorts of people probably has a, uh, a mark on these guys that's beyond counting for their experience making these guys even more deadly. So, but let's read over their Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes and see what they got. Alrighty, they're still a speed 6. These guys are still a mat 8. Defense, 13. Armor is now 15 for Ravagers, making them even more dangerous. Um, they still have Pathfinder, and they were given tough. So, yeah, these guys are hard to take down. Um, they were given, of course, as every Ravager, the Blood Snatcher Heart Eater ability, so they can gain up to three bodies. And then they can use those bodies to give themselves a boosted attack or damage roll, or make an additional attack. Uh, they were also given a Rapid Healing as well. And they were also given, well, they had Tree Walker, so they kept Tree Walker. Um, and then it appears they were given a veteran leader. So while within 10 of him, all Tharn models gain a plus one to their attack rolls, making them even more accurate and even more dangerous in the long run. So this guy is actually just a good staple to have in any Tharn army. Uh, the moves they took away from him are Overtake, are Sprint, and tactician. Um, I imagine because they all have, you know, the dual attacks and all sorts of stuff like that, and they have the, you know, crazy speed on most of the Tharn models outside of the Ravagers. Even Ravagers are actually pretty quick for a medium sized model. Um, I imagine it's more for a balancing issue, so they got that. Um, also, his Tharn Axe switched out Powerful Charge for Brutal Charge, as every other Tharn model or Tharn Ravager seemed to have to have. And he still has a reach on that weapon, so he's still swinging at a POW 15 from a charge and a 13 regular. So that makes these guys even more terrifying and almost broken. Not quite. Not quite. They got nerfed down a little bit, but eh, that happens. And with all of their all of their abilities to join together, Thorn are still a huge terrifying force on the battlefield. So yeah, look out for this guy. And if you see white hair on an old Thorn. Make sure you stay, give him plenty of space because he's a lot more dangerous than all the young, young bloods out there. So, alrighty, let's move on. Tharn Bloodcrackers. Among the Tharn, it is not only the men who heed the call of the Devourer. Their women are equally bloodthirsty and savage. Bloodcrackers are the remnant of an ancient way, a people of a darker time, and their choice of arms reflects this. They prefer to pierce foes from a distance with weighted javelins, but they also wield clawed bucklers to eviscerate those who close with them in melee. Bloodcrackers rarely allow their foes to get so close, however. Their lean forms are instead barely seen in the shadows darting through the umbral underbrush, hurling javelins with terrifying accuracy into vulnerable flanks in the shifting chaos of battle. Those who have faced blood tractors fear their phonetic savagery with which these women conduct their attacks. Though they do not adopt the hulking forms of the ravager blood trackers, do call upon the devourer worm to imbue them with an essence of animals that strike with lightning swiftness. 
their hypersensitivity awareness is enhanced well beyond human limits, and they slice enemies to ribbons with savage relentlessness. Once they have chosen the target of their hunt, they will seek its destruction to the exclusion of all other concerns beyond selecting new prey. Few have ever seen the blood trackers clearly, and those who have say they draw shadows about them, like cloaks. Though magically camouflaged is an exaggeration, blood trackers do possess a near supernatural ability to blend in their environment and move through even the densest underbrush with supernatural accuracy. And let's read about their character attachment as well, and then we'll go over the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes all at once at the end. Noala the Huntress. Circle character unit attachment. She reads prophecy in the blood of our enemies and carves a destiny from their flesh. Chromac the Ravenous. Among the most renowned Tharn warriors of the modern age, Nuala is a barbarous myth come to life. Numerous Toas pay homage to their savage queen, counting themselves fortunate to follow in her warpath, though she takes vicious pleasure in leading the bloody slaughter of her enemies. She has noble aims. Nuala would see her people restored to the grand age of the Mulgar, when the cities of mankind trembled at the might of the devourer worms chosen. By careful alliances and bold strikes against her nearest enemies, Nuala's tribe has prospered and increased while others have withered or been left decimated by the wars of the druids. Nuala is as pleased to prey upon remote villages and communities as she is to battle the armies that oppose the Tharn and their circle allies. While the finest of the blood trackers at her side, she begins hunting her chosen prey. She and her followers descend upon their victims in a shower of piercing javelins and lethal blows, the screams of the dying inflaming their desires for murder. Each death is committed to the beast of all shapes, who looks with favor upon the feast Nuala offers in its name and grants its protection to the tribes who bow to her. All right, and let's go over the Mark III to Mark IV changes for these guys. Alrighty, we're gonna start with the Tharn Blood Trackers, Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes. It appears not not much has changed because why change a good thing? We are looking at a same speed seven, making these guys incredibly fast, like elves. Um, their Matt and Rat is still a six, defense still a 14, armor still 11. They are hit hard to hit, but they are easy to kill once you do. They are still given advanced deployment, they are still given Pathfinder. They were given dual attack like a lot of other characters were in Mark IV, which is great since they do have a ranged weapon and a melee weapon as well. Uh, they're still given their prey ability, so they still choose a target that they're trying to hunt, and they get a plus two to their attack and damage rolls against them. Um, they still have a weapon master on their throne javelin. However, throne javelins are a little different now because they removed the strength buff. Now it's just a straight power, so they really don't have strength anymore. Just power, which makes more sense in the long run, the way they moved everything up. So the javelin is a POW 9 weapon master, range 7, which is the exact same thing it was before. So we got that. So. All in all, really, these guys have not changed at all. Also, they still have stealth. So, this is almost the exact same model. Well, basically, is the exact same model. However, it is a five model maximum now for the unit size. So, you can have up to two of these guys, and now they cost eight points for five. So, unfortunately, they are a little bit more expensive by one, but that's just how it goes. So, but let's move on to Nuala the Huntress Mark III to Mark IV changes. Alrighty, appears that she still has advanced deployment, still has Pathfinder, still has stealth, so that's all good. Uh, it appears her stat line is still the same as it was before. Speed 7, Mat 8, Rat 7, great. Uh, defense 14, Armor 11, as always. Uh, her weapons still have a, well, technically it's new, but they still have a Power 9 and Weapon Master. And then her Fighting Claws also have a Weapon Master on it, and the POW 9 as well, which makes her very dangerous, especially if she's coming at you charging. But her abilities are what we're looking at right now, so let's see what we got. Alrighty, two moves this guy, or girl rather, has lost is Reform, um, just because, well, they changed the movement rules for a lot of units, so that's just how it goes. 
And then she also lost quick work, but of course this entire unit has dual attack now anyway, so that was kind of no neither here nor there. Um, these guys do not, however, have the ability to shoot well in melee, um, just because that would be, well, very unfortunate for any of their enemies. But her new ability she, she received is Vengeance for the unit, so if anybody's hurt, they can move up to three inches and take a melee attack, and since most of these guys have a pretty decent melee attack anyway, or relatively speaking, that's actually pretty dangerous. And then the other one they gave her is Hunter's Reckoning, which allows them once per game to change who they are, who their prey target is. So that's great. She also still has prey as well, because that makes sense since she's in a unit that uses it. So there you go. Some nice updates uh, due to the Mark IV rules. I have personally gone up against these guys a couple times, however, uh, I think one of the times I was with the General or Commandant Urisk, and he has a, a beautiful spell, I think it's called Wind Lash or Wind Rush or something, I can't remember right now, but because these guys have such low armor, even if you ding them with something that would normally not hurt anybody with a decent amount of armor, it annihilates these units and you want to try to get them annihilated before they get up to you because once they start throwing the javelins they'll start spearing through people including my armor has been pierced by their spear unfortunately a number of times just because well they're really good at hitting those grooves on the armor so I'll always be aware of these guys very very dangerous but let's move on next up the Tharn Bloodweavers Fresh blood pumped by the frantic hearts carries a magic of its own. With each cut, we claim the power for our own. Kiri, a scar maker, priestess of the brow worm. Well, that sounds terrifying already. Tharn women who practice the rites of blood weavers are true masters of bloodletting. Their devotion to the brow worm is absolute. Each kill a sacrifice performed with the visceral immediacy of sacral blades wielded by their own crimson hands. Blood weavers conduct ritual hunts according to the celestial conjunctions of the eye of the worm, drenching themselves in the blood of the slain while singing praises to the devourer. The holy specifics of these rites are of little consolation to their victims, but involve offerings that correspond to the stars. Rare celestial events merit greater offerings of blood and flesh, and sometimes bring together larger gatherings of individual sisterhoods. Members of each tight-knit cabal have learned to fight side by side with smooth practice movements, relying solely on non-verbal cues for coordination. The silence with which they kill is followed by the chilling sound of their ecstatic chanting. Civilized humans might dismiss the existence of these Tharn witches as superstition, were it not for the gruesome remains that mark their passage. Witnessing them in battle is drive pious menites to madness. Blood weavers close in for the kill, cloaked in animated shadow that obscures their movements. As the blades taste flesh, primal powers cause the victims to erupt with sickening force, unleashing fragments of bone and gouts of blood in a torrent of boiling gore. And I've actually gone up against these guys before, and they're not kidding. The moment these blades hit somebody is never a never something you ever want to see if you can avoid it. They say war is hell, but these guys add an additional level to it of carnage. So once they get magic exploding bodies in, that is where you should draw the line. But let's go over the Bloodweaver Horospex. I think that's how you pronounce their names. Basically, they're the leaders. So let's go over what information we have drawn from them, even though these guys are superstitions. Come life, but let's go find out. Tharn Bloodweaver's Horror Specs. And thank you, Iron Kingdom's Wiki, for your insight, because I do not believe these guys are listed in any books that I have hold of, so let's read it over. Tharn Bloodweaver Horror Specs are Tharn Bloodweavers skilled in the bloody art of divination. Using the fresh blood and viscera to slain foes, the Bloodweaver Horospex is able to divine the strands of future and fate. In battle, her bloody divination empowers the attacks of Bloodweavers accompanying, giving them unerring accuracy and lethal potency. 
Spells of enemy arcanist wither away as the horse boxes draw upon the primordial power of the devourer worm, using blood magic toward both herself and her companions while she turns her weapons into conduits for the very energies of life and death. Yeah, that sounds terrifying, and I believe I've actually gone up against one of them before, but it was fleeting because I believe we were running. Well, not running, retreating, a tactical withdrawal. <laughs> that sounds a lot better than running. But once your troops break, it's probably best to start pulling back yourself. But let's go over the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes and see what we got. Alrighty, the Tharn Blood Weavers. It appears not much has changed about them. Still a speed 7, still a mat 6, still a defense 14, still an arm 11, still have stealth, still have pathfinder, still have gang. Yay for them. Their weapon is still a power 9, thank goodness, so you can at least hope that nothing explodes. And their magical weapons has been changed, basically. So instead of a blood burst, they were given burster, which I have seen other models use similar things. But what Burster is, is when this kills a model, D3, well, not D3, enemy models within 3 inches of it suffer a POW 10 damage rolls automatically. The original one was when they killed a model, created a 5 inch AoE, and the AoE was a blast damage equal to the power of the strength of the model, but since strength was removed, I guess they had to make it a little bit more, well, streamlined. Uh, and it appears they were given Grievous Wounds as well, so they can remove tough. And then models can't have damage removed from them for one round. And then they were given Life Stealer on that weapon. And all of these are attack types, so they have to choose the attack before they do it. Uh, the last one was given a Life Stealer, so anytime it destroys an enemy, they can heal a a model within 10 inches a d3 so that's a little nicer but burster is still an awful attack and i would like to have no part in it because it's still a pow 10 explosion of three inches which is kind of terrifying it's not an aoe but it's every model within three three inches suffer a pow 10 so if it's a low armor model or low armor unit such as elves i would recommend they probably stay back and pick these guys off from well, five inches if they can, because these guys have stealth, so that's about as close as you gotta get. But let's read over the horse bucks. The horse bucks. Horse bucks. Yeah. Alrighty, looks like she is a speed seven, mat seven, defense 14, arm 11, stealth and pathfinder, so that's all the same. Um, she also still has gang, which is great for them. Uh, she gives the entire unit ambush, which is awful, especially since... In Mark III, she only gave them advanced deployment. Oof. Um, and she still gives them divine inspiration. So they still gain an additional die for both attack and damage rolls, and they get to discard the lowest roll, making the the idea of them doing damage more certain. So great for them. Uh, her Sacral Blades is still a... She still has Burster, Grievous Wounds, and Lifesteal like the others. But yeah, that, that Divine Inspiration and Ambush makes this model even more just terrifying to go up against. So look out for this lady. I don't want to go up against her. Oh, and she lost Sacred Ward, so she can be targeted by spells now. I'm not sure why they removed that, but they did. So there you go. Let's move on. Moving on to Bloodweaver and Night Witch. Circle Thorn Solo. In consuming her foes, she learns their most guarded weaknesses and her own inner strengths. Tharn Chieftain Colventus? Weird name. Even among the Tharn, Night Witches are regarded as the et epitome of devourer worship, as priestesses and ranking practitioners of the blood weaving arts. They move across the battlefield with a veil of gore and carnage. With ruthless animosity, they leave behind a trail of butchered opponents, taking from each one token of meat and a precious organ to fuel their own powerful blood magic. Night witches are well versed in the primal mystical practices regarding the use of the flesh. They are not content to merely draw upon the energies of their victims' blood, but are accomplished bone grinders, using all manners of organs, bones, and connective tissue to achieve their ends. This close relationship with flesh has led to a savage appreciation for the taste of the fallen. Night witches consume the innards of their victim as often as they use them to empower their magic. 
Through a deep connection to the beast of all shapes, they have learned to draw upon the energies inherent in consumed flesh to knit their own wounds. At times, they even draw upon their own vitality to fuel the slaughter, replenishing their life force with the blood of the fallen enemies. Many blood reavers view the blood-splattered exultation of the night witches as a glimpse into the true heart of their craft. The sight of these ritual killings is enough to drive their peers to new levels of violence, instilling in them the insatiable bloodthirst beyond even the appetite of the beast of the wilds. Yeah, I think I've seen her once or twice as well, and yeah, a bag full of body parts. Yeah, that's worse than the blood, and the smell is usually not that not that best either, but most of the time it's usually fresh organs, so the rot hasn't came in yet, so yeah, small favors. But let's read the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes and see what we got. Alrighty, the stats are still the same, speed 7, mat 7, defense 14... Arm 11 still is a Pathfinder, still is Advanced Deployment, and still is Stealth. Great. Perfect. Terrifying. Well, I think the Advanced Deployment was actually added. Yeah, it was added. So that's a new one. Yay for them. Alrighty, and it appears that some things got nerfed or just made more simple by this thing. So her, she lost Blood Rituals, which used to allow her to suffer AD3 damage points to boost an attack or damage roll, which would have been cool, but they removed that and they kept Killing Spree. So after she kills something, she moves one inch and makes another attack, which is awesome. And then, of course, everybody within 10, or all of the Blood Weavers within 10 also gain Killing Spree, which makes them even more terrifying. But I believe her implements of death actually made up for some of her stuff. Um, she now has Dispel. So if she hits a model slash unit, all upkeep spells and anime on that unit expire. Uh, she now um, she has Grievous Wounds. She has that before. Um, and she has Life Stealer instead of Life Drinker. Which Life Stealer, as you, we read in the original Blood Weavers, after she kills an enemy model... It removes D3 damage points from a model currently within 10. So she technically can heal herself or other models. So if she's all full up, then she can actually use that to heal somebody else. Or if she's a little damaged, she can use that to heal herself, which is great. Also, she was given a Weapon Master on her Implements of Death, and she has two of those. So she can, you know, create whatever attack type she wants with a 3 damage die on a POW 10 weapon. So, yeah, it makes her a lot more dangerous than her kin, but it also makes her kin a lot more dangerous with her in the army. And she is a solo, so if you have her around with multiple units of Blood Weavers, unfortunately for anybody going up against that army, that would be a bad decision, especially if they do not have very heavily armored models around them. But let's move on. Tharn Wolf Rider, Circle Light Cowry Unit. By the time I pulled the trigger, she was past me. Sarge took a javelin in the throat, and she circled for another throw. I ran, Morrow helped me. I ran screaming. Corporal Ian Rowe at 95th Trencher Company, Signar. Nothing is more terrifying than a group of Tharn on the hunt. Blood trackers strike their prey from the flanks and evade bullets with preternatural reflexes. Ravagers cleave enemies with axes before tearing out and feasting on their hearts. Then an eerie chorus of howls arise from all sides, and the hulking shadowy forms of dusk wolves carrying blood trackers emerge from the forest, moving so quickly that enemies cannot brace for their attack. The wolves dart past and behind defenders as their blood trackers riders hurl javelins after javelin. Dusk wolves pull down their prey, bite clean through tendons and muscles, and leave enemies bleeding out their last before springing away behind the shelters of nearby trees. Soon nothing remains on the field but meat for the crows. No mere hunters of scent and blood, blood trackers perform fearsome rites in the name of the devourer. Their connection to the worm predators a spirit allows them to form strong bonds with their chosen dust wolves, and together they became a singular deadly hunting group. Death follows wherever they stalk, whether from silently hurled javelins or the crushing bite of the horse-sized wolf tearing out the enemy's throat. Yeah, that sounds great, especially something that's faster than a thorn. 
moving at a speed 9, which is terrifying. Alrighty, let's see the Tharn Wolf Riders Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes. Alrighty, their stats, their stability speed 9. Uh, their mat actually went up to a 7. Um, their rat is still a 6. Their defense is a 15. Their armor is 14. They still have Pathfinder. Uh, it appears they were given dual attack, which is probably going to take out their assault. They had Mark 3. Um, they have Breakthrough, which means that they can run past people's attacks, attack range and not, uh, not lose their attack due to the Mark 4 changes. So uh, basically it's a parry, but yeah, it's just the new one. Um, there looks like they removed Assault as per stuff. Looks like they removed Hunter, unfortunately. Uh, looks like they removed Prey, unfortunately. Uh, but they were given annoyance, so models within one inch suffer a minus one to the attack. They were given reposition, so it makes them faster after a charge. So after they, after they charge or move, they move an additional three inches. So if they have a successful charge or they move, they can move three inches afterwards. They have a. They were given a move called unpredictable movement. When placing the models during their normal movement, after determining the advancing model's movement, place the remaining troopers of the squad within four inches instead of two, which actually allows these guys to spread out really well, which is great for a, a defense 15, armor 14, so they can't be hit by blast damage, and if they are, you're basically just picking one off at a time. They were, however, given unyielding, so that is great for them. So they gain a plus two armed melee attack, so it gets them up to an arm 16, and it appears they were given a weapon master on, well, I think they had Weapon Master on their Throne Javelin, but they gave it to them on their Shielded Blade, or Bladed Shield as well, giving them an additional attack as well. So that actually makes them way better in that stuff. They removed Luck off their weapon, unfortunately, so they can't re-roll a missed attack rolls, but eh. They, uh, they gave them a lot of very different rules, so playing these guys is very different from the original. But that's how it goes. New mark, new setup. And their mount no longer has an attack, which is unfortunate, especially due to the lore. But eh, that's how it happens. Maybe the annoyance and all that stuff really kind of plays this up. So, But let's move on. And thank you again to Iron Kingdom's wiki for providing information about these guys. Since, uh, well, they're not really in very many of the archives that I have available. But let's begin. The Wolf Rider Champions are scarred and battered veteran wolf riders that embody speed and agility and ruthlessness for which their kind is known. Survivors of many battles, they are clad with trinkets and armor fashioned from the bones of their victims and their savage visage elicit fear from their prey and admiration from those who ride beside them in battle. Champions subdue only the most willful and physically imposing dusk wolves as mounts. Mutual respect serves as the foundation and of the relationship and the bond formed between Champion and the wolf is maintained until one of one or the other dies. Unity of the hunting pack is vital for the wolf riders as each of its members depend on the other for their continued survival. A Tharn king or queen who has united several tribes must similarly forge strong bonds with their respective hunting pack leaders. Thus champions may serve as the right hand of the tribe's chieftain, as well as the acting as liaison between the packs, serving the same king or queen. Each champion is entrusted to oversee a particular territory, and in times of need can rally the tribe's riders. Thus these veteran warriors often take over leadership of a larger hunt and require coordinate, coordination between the multiple packs of wolf riders. Overseeing such sophisticated hunts means binding them together and orchestrating their movements, as well as coordinating with the other Tharn and allies of the Black Clad in order to bring down their numerous and formidable en enemies. Well, these guys sound exciting and fun, and way more deadly. But let's see what the uh, Mark III to Mark IV changes are, and then we will see for sure. Alrighty, let's see the Tharn Wolf Rider Champion Mark III to Mark IV changes. Alrighty, appears their stat line is still pretty similar. However, they were nerfed down to a mat 7 instead of a mat 8, which is strange. Um, their speed's still a 9, armor still a... Our defense still a 15, armor still a 14. 
Um, they, this one also has Breakthrough, Pathfinder, Dual Attack as well. Um, they are also Annoyances. I wonder if they use the Annoyance from Mark III and then they just give it to every Wolf Rider. That's probably what it is. Um, they have Jump still, so they can still, after a full advance, they can jump five inches. Um, they still have the Leadership Wolf Rider Prowl, so they can give all other Wolf Riders within 10 inches the Prowl ability, so if they're in Concealment, they gain Stealth. Um, they still have Reposition 5, so that's great. They and they were given Unyielding as well, so they get a plus 2 armor while in melee attack, so gets them up to a Arm 16, which gives these guys a phenomenal survivability. Uh, it appears they removed dual attack, but dual attack was given to them to the Mark IV. And it appears they removed backstab because, well, you can't have backstab and Mark IV since there's no back arcs anymore. So that made sense to remove those. And they still have a Weapon Master on their throne javelins as well. And and uh, melee javelins as well. And they removed the mount attacks. I imagine they did that as a more of a balance move so that they could... Uh, so that they could have their dual attack and not be crazy overpowered. So, I don't know. We'll see how they play out in the near future. I have never gone up against these guys personally, so I have no idea how they play through, but a model that has a base speed of 9 inches, plus reposition 3 or 5, like, and a defense of 15 on top of it, like, these guys are almost unhittable, and they're weapon masters, so I'm like, yeah... Yeah, adding these guys, you add a lot of speed and a lot of a lot of hitting to a Tharn army, which they need more impact shots, especially if you're only playing with the with the Blood Weavers. So, yeah, let's move on. Alrighty, next up is the Tharn Blood Shaman. Tharn Blood Shamans wield powerful primeval magic. The Tharn have been blessed with the Devourer Worm as a reward for their single-minded devotion. Blood shamans have mastered the arts of blood magic, but unlike blood weavers who leap into the fray to wet their sacrificial blades, blood shamans are more reserved and focused, steeped in the deeper sacrificial rites. They have long served the masters of the Circle Obros, facilitating their magics through bloodletting linked by the blood sworn packs, such as shamans can borrow spells from those they serve. Blood shamans can become powerful assets to the warlocks of the uh, Circle Oberos. As the unique connection the Tharn have with the Beast of All Shapes greatly enhances their own powers, making blood shamans much sought after companions in battle. And thank you again for the Iron Kingdom's wiki for giving us that fantastic detail about their lore. But let's see what their Mark III to Mark IV changes are, shall we? Alrighty, their stat list is pretty much the same. They have a speed of 7, magic attack of 6, normal melee attack of 7, uh, defense 14 and 11. They are still Pathfinder and still have stealth. They still have Battle Wizard, which means after they kill somebody, they can cast a spell. And they still have set defense. So anybody that charges them gets a minus 2 to their charge or power or slam power attacks against them. So that is great. Let's see if anything changed in their magic attacks or magic spells they can guess. And it appears their spell list is almost identical. Well, actually it is identical to their stuff. Uh, they still have a blood ritual. Um, so they can sacrifice someone near them and give somebody a, oh, somebody within five, a divine inspiration that gives them an additional attack, die on attack and damage rolls. And then they get to remove the lowest. They still have Harmonious Exaltation, which allows their spellcaster or their leader model to reduce their spell cost by one. And, and then they still have Spell Slaves, so they can still cast their leader models, one of their spells that's three or less focus. So, yeah, these guys are almost identical, well, yeah, almost basically identical to their original selves. So, I guess they didn't really deem these guys worthy of a full reset on their stuff. Even their weapons are the same. They still have their standard spear and they still have their ritual blades. So, yeah, these guys are still a phenomenal guy. Um, I believe, yeah, these guys are still in attachment. So, yeah, keep them going. And I suppose there's nothing broken. Don't change it, right? But I've never actually gone up against one of these guys myself. Well, 
Or if I have, I don't remember. I don't know. I've gone up against a lot of armies in my time, and certain models or certain people I don't remember ever fighting. So there's that. But let's move on to the last couple pieces of this Tharn list. Now this next guy, I'm not entirely sure if he's actually a Tharn or not, but I know he's ancient and I know he has been around for a long time. But we are going to talk about Lord of the Feast, Circle Character Solo. We called the Lord of the Feast to slaughter in the time of Orgoth. He stalked those places stolen from us and littered the forest floor with the bones of our enemies. Omnipotent death hope. A walking horror of prehistory. The Lord of Feasts feeds the ravenous hunger of the devourer worm. It lurks in the shadows and falls upon those doomed to cross its path. From each victim, the Feast Lord claims the viscera and vital organs. It then prepares its sacrificial offering to the beast of all shapes and is rewarded with a wave of savage power. Upon the completion of its work, the Lord of Feasts transforms into ravens that linger to consume the eyes of the slain. The circle seldom intentionally draws the attention of the devourer, for they prefer to tap into the mindless power of Orbros that, refu that suffuses the world. Dark times sometimes require dark measures, however, and the druids have begun to call upon the forgotten lore once known only to the highest priests of the Mulgar tribes. With these black rites, they have once again summoned the avatar of Unsleeping One and unleashed it upon the living. The Lord of Feast's only companion is the raven that ranges ahead of its master, leading its lord to fresh victims, emerging like the shadows of death. The Feast Lord whirls its long blade in the storm of steel, carving into enemy fleshes, and relishes its banquet of bloody sacrifice. I've gone up against this man a many, a many times. And weirdly enough, I feel like when you feel like you lay him low, he just disappears into ravens like the mist. He is definitely a a creature of you know, prehistory. I'm not sure if he can ever be killed or ever actually you know be removed. But when he's slaughtering entire units by himself, just going from one man to another, this uh, this thing is terrifying to behold. I say it's Tharn. Might not be Tharn, he might just be so old he looks kind of like a Tharn, but like his brutality, very Tharn-like to me, but this guy's older than most histories. I imagine if I ever asked the old witch, she probably knows, and she probably was around when he was created, because, well, she's been around forever. So, yeah, this guy is terrifying, and he has the ability just to show up where you don't want him, and remove a lot of people off the field of battle, so... Terrifying, But let's see what his Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes are, shall we? Alrighty, its stats are actually a little bit better than its original form in Mark 3. Its base speed is now 6. Its mat is 8. Its rat is 7. Defense, 12. And armor dropped down to a 16, which actually makes more sense because he's pretty skinny. Um, it appears he still has his stealth. He still has Pathfinder. Uh, he was given dual attack because a lot of models were given dual attack in Mark IV. Uh, he was given advanced deployment, which is great for him and pretty normal for Tharn models. If he's not actually a Tharn model, he's whatever he is. Um, he still has, well, they changed up Heart Eater, so it's, you know, Body Snatcher Heart Eater, so he can gain model, he can gain corpse tokens, up to three of them. And then he can use them to make an additional attacks, uh, boost attack or damage rolls. And then he also has a death feast on that, making the body snatcher really a little bit more nice because he can actually heal himself using bodies as well. Uh, his raven is still has shifter, which allows them to shoot, uh, well, shoot a model but not do any damage to it. He just shows up next to what model he shot, so he can move up to eight inches and just you know close in on a unit and drop behind all sorts of people. Um, his worm blade. Um, was given a couple abilities like Blood Reaper. Uh, Blood Reaper used to be an ability he he had in his ability stuff, but now it's a weapon ability, um, which basically allows him to hit everybody in his line of sight. And since line of sight now is 360, he drops into the center of a unit and he swings around like a little top. So, yeah, terrifying. And at a POW 13, it makes it even more terrifying. And then he was also given... 
grievous wounds. So models cannot models lose tough and can't have damage removed from them. And also he was given a death power as well. So every time he has bodies on him, he gains a plus one arm and a plus one to his melee attack damage rolls for each corpse token on him. So he can get way more powerful. Um, Max, if he has three bodies on him, he gets up to a he gets up to an arm 19 and a melee attack of 16. So he's hitting basically like a man of war with the same armor count, but way more accurate. So yeah, he is a terrifying man to behold. He's actually a little bit better in Mark IV than he was Mark III. Um, he's not as good as he was Mark I, but with some weird shenanigans, you can get him moving up to 24 inches across the board, which is terrifying. But Mark IV, he sounds like a pretty reasonable guy to get on the battlefield if he's on your side. If he's on my side, well, I don't know why he'd be on my side because Circle Obros really doesn't like working with Warcasters. So that is that. But let's go over the last two and we even have a man whose lore comes in from the ravings of a hermit of Hingehold. So let's read and find out what we got. Alrighty, we have some information on Bridget and Cole. The Tharn twins Bridget and Cole have built their reputation upon the piles of corpses beyond counting. Born to the first generation of Tharn after the curse of the Ten Ills was lifted and saved their race from extinction. These twins have come to embody a new hope. A skilled hunter, Bridget, has mastered the use of the heavy Tharn bow. When hunting larger game, she uses the bow to cripple and maim an enemy before allowing her brutish brother, Call, to finish the prey with his heavy axe. They balance the skills of a hunter with the brutality and savagery of the greatest predatory beast. And looking at these, well, siblings, technically, you can tell that these guys kind of embody what the Tharn are. You gain both the Tharn Ravager with the skills of the Tharn Blood Trackers, but with a bow. So, let's see what their Mark III to Mark IV changes are. Again, I've never seen these guys in battle. I've only seen these guys in the pages of the archives. So, let's check them out. And with any character unit, as these guys are, um, their, their skills actually differ depending on who they are. But let's start with a Bridget. Bridget has a speed of 7, Mat of 7, Rat of 7, Defense of 16, and Armor of 12. So that's the exact same. Um, they both have Gang because they're in a unit, so that means that they both have Gang. Uh, they both have, well, Bridget has Stealth. They both have Pathfinder. Uh, Bridget has Dual Attack and Advanced Deployment, which means both of them have Advanced Deployment. And they both still have Pathfinder as well. And the things that Bridget gives the unit is gang, well, is prey. And that is the same as her Mark III version as well. So she gives the whole unit prey so they get to choose their target. And they get a plus two to their attack and damage rolls, plus their gang. So they can actually get up to a plus four on each of their attack and damage rolls, which is terrifying. They removed Quick Work from Bridget because she has dual attack now, which is basically the Quick Work, just a little easier to play with. And both Bridget's weapons, her longbow at a range 12, POW 10 is, path, is a weapon master, and so is her hunting knife at a POW 9. So she is a very good at what she does. And, you know, granting her entire unit prey is actually a pretty phenomenal, especially since these guys have such nice stats. Let's move on to her brother, Call. Her brother Call has tough, like every other Ravager of the a bunch. He also has the Heart Eater ability. So, like every other Ravager, he gains a well. He can spend a body token to gain an additional attack or damage die onto his attack and damage rolls, or he can buy additional attacks, which makes him very Ravager-like. Um, he still has Gang, of course, because she has Gang. Uh, he grants Tree Walker to the entire unit, which is what they did in Mark III. So I'm curious if these guys were actually the reason that the rest of the Ravagers updated. Could be it, or maybe they just wanted to keep all that going like that. Uh, his Rapid Healing, that was just on him last in Mark III, but now it's on every Ravager. So I'm curious if, uh, curious if there's some sort of lore that ties that all in that we have not discovered yet. Hmm, weird. Uh, he also still has Shield Guard. 
which allows him to, if somebody within three of him is directly hit by a non-spray ranged attack, this model can take the hit instead. And if I'm not mistaken in the new Mark IV, um, Shield Guard doesn't work on spells. I'm not sure if it ever worked on spells, but it's just non-spray range attacks. It does not specify if magic attacks as well. So because there are other, other blocking things that include magic in the writing, I'm going to assume that Shield Guard does not block magic attacks. So that's fun. And his weapon is a Mat 7 POW 13 with Brutal Charge. And I'm making the assumption that, well, yeah, he's always had Brutal Charge. So that hasn't changed either. So these guys have not changed at all. I'm, I really am curious if the rest of the Tharn Ravagers just were being matched up to Coles. So they had some additional ability and kind of leveled off something. Oh. But I'm not sure what's going on in the background, but these guys are a fantastic du dual unit to add to any game because, like, their stat line's solid. Um, Cole is a little slower. He's a six, strength, or mat seven, you know, defense 14, arm 17. Yeah, these guys, these guys can, you know, whip out the, whip out some awesome damage if uh, put in the right circumstances. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing these this pair of twins out in the field well not against them but you know in the future so but let's go find the last of the archives from the hermit of hinchhold and see what his prophecies are from the aftermath of the oblivion crisis and i believe we are going to go find kogan the exile kogan was a proud thorn warrior who like the rest of his tribe managed to survive the apocalypse unscathed while hunting in the waste, Kogan had the unfortunate encounter with a large armored bear, which managed to tear his arm off before running away with it. It should have been the end of Kogan then and there, but as he lay bleeding out, he was discovered by another scavenger crew that took pity upon him. The crew nursed Kogan back to health while their mechanic built Kogan a new mechanical arm out of scrap parts. Gracious for what they had done for him, Kogan spared the crew instead of bringing them back to his tribe as a meal. When Kogan returned, his tribe immediately spurned him for the metallic monstrosity that replaced his natural arm. They claimed he had defiled their traditions and God, and they cast him out. Exiled, Kogan now wanders the waste as a lone survivor, but one who has his eyes opened to the world around him. He isn't trusting of many outsiders, but is willing to give most a fair chance before deciding if they are a potential ally or his next meal. Well, that sounds like Kogan. It sounds like a Tharn. Yeah. And an armored bear. There's only two groups that I know that use armored bears, and I believe one are the Trollkin, and two is a dwarf who happens to have an armored bear that runs around with him. And that's just a weird relationship to begin with. You don't know which armored bear it is, because the aftermath of the apocalypse could be anything at that point. But let's go see his... I've never I've never actually ran into Kogan as well, so I don't know how he is. But he is a minion, so he actually works for a couple different people. But let me see if I can find anything on a Mark III to Mark IV. Alrighty, his stat list is the same. Speed 6, Mat 8. Defense 13, armor 16, which is great. He still has Pathfinder. He still has Tough, as many Tharn Ravagers seem to do. He, he was given the Body Snatcher Heart Eater ability, like every other Tharn Ravager that we've gone over multiple, multiple times. Uh, he still has his Rapid Healing, like every other Tharn Ravager. He still has Tree Walker, like every other Tharn Ravager. And he was given Unyielding, like every other Tharn Ravager. I'm just surprised that they maintained all of these little stats on here. The Heart Eater, Rapid Healing, Tree Walker, and Unyielding. Well, the Unyielding is a little different for a Tharn Ravager, but all the, the main three are what we're talking about. And then his axe is what, uh, what derives him, changes him from his Tharn Ravager kin, because his axe is actually pretty neat, and the amount of damage this thing pulls out... Or the amount of things that it can do just makes it any better. It's almost like being given a mechanical arm to a guy who already has crazy huge strength makes them even more dangerous. 
But as most Tharn, he was given brutal charge, so he gets his charge attacks up to a POW 13, but they mat 8, so he's actually really good at hitting it. But he is also given smite, so he can slam a model D6 inches away. So, and then I believe they're also knocked down, but don't quote me on that. I can't remember. <laughs> but it does appear that his power was nerfed because I believe his original Mark III incarnation was a 16. So I imagine they didn't want a medium base model to be thrown around an 18 charge attack, which makes sense for somebody as powerful and accurate at hitting people as Tharn is, who can also boost his own attacks. So yeah, he's still as dangerous as he ever could be. And he, the ability to be able to boost your own stuff is actually just something that every solo wishes they had, but most don't. So, but that appears that is it for the Tharn. That is everything we have on the Tharn and all their lore. Um, I want to sh do another shout out. Thank you, Private Your Press, for letting us read your fantastic lore. And thank all of you for listening if you are here so far. And please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you have any suggestions. And I will try to get over to them as quickly as possible. And as always, please let your fellow friends and fellow gamers know about this podcast slash YouTube channel. It does help the channel grow. And as always, class dismissed. <laughs>